Hello there, Atheist Junior here, your friend and humble narrator. And I was looking through YouTube recently at the recently uploaded videos for something that was like related to atheism or, you know, proof that God exists or one of those videos of like, these are questions atheists can't answer, blah, blah, blah. Just something for me to respond to. Um, and I stumbled across this video where I felt like uh, I just needed to respond to it. So. Let's get into it. Dear Aaron Ra, Matt Dillahunty. I'm going to stop you right there, okay? It's pronounced Aaron Ra. Aaron. Like, you know, like a registered nurse, R-N. Like the, the letters of the alphabet, R-N. It's not Aaron. Aaron is spelled with two A's. Aaron spells his name with one A. It's Aaron Ra. This drives me crazy. Eminent atheist thinkers, Carl Sagan, you say there is no God. Well, how do you explain this sto this story right here? There is no religion, no other religion, except Christianity. With stories like this, no one ever mocked or rejected becoming a Hindu. I'm pretty sure that they did. There are probably lots of people who rejected becoming a Hindu, like people who grew up and their parents wanted them to be the same religion as them. But later in life, they rejected that faith. This happens with all religions. People mock all religions. What are you talking about? And was killed for it by God. No one ever rejected becoming a Mormon or become a Muslim when they felt the invitation to do so. Okay, fair enough. I guess I didn't let him finish what he was saying. So he said that nobody ever uh, insulted the Hindu religion or rejected it and then was killed for it. Yeah, there are lots of people who... Have you ever heard of an apostate? There are tons of people who were Muslims, and they became atheists, and they got the death penalty or were tortured. That's a, there were so many people who rejected the Christian faith and got killed for it. What are you talking about? And no one ever did that and was killed for rejecting those religions. Aaron Ra, Matt Diddle Honey, how in the fuck <laughs> do you explain this story if there is no God? This story would make you think twice. About what what story? Just tell me. Tell me what it is. It's atheism. I want an answer. Unless you're too chair, unless you're too chicken shit, listen to the story and give me an answer. Unless this make you really re realize there really is a god. <laughs> I laugh at you. Come on, give me an answer. If you if you really if you're really atheist. I love this guy. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I, what, a, okay, um, I need to hear the story first before you can tell me that it's going to convince me that God exists, so just tell me what it is. I'm not just angry at God. I was holding a revival meeting in Taylor's at the Southern Victory Baptist Church. Dr. Ed Harrison was the pastor, one of the most godly men in the world. Atheists. Two boys drove up riding piggyback on a motorcycle. Oh, the not this story, huh? One of the deacons there was, and instead of coming in, they began to curse. That I know they entered into a curve. Uh, shall I saw the approaching automobile? Rubbed off on the right side of his head and his shoulder. Come get the damn story. Revival sponsored by the twenty-seven was. This is why you prepare your videos before you start recording. Here, this story. I was conducting a revival, a social wide revival sponsored by the 27 Baptist churches in that parish in Louisiana. This story, Aaron Ra, Matt Little Honey. This story. If there's no God, how do you, how the hell do you explain this story away? You know, in Louisiana, they do not 
not have counties like we have in North Carolina. They have parishes. Dumbasses. And this was a parish-wide revival. And we had come to the last night of the meeting, and I was preaching this sermon, and the meeting was being held in the rodeo arena. And as I preached, on the last tier of seats, over to my right, on the last row, top seats, were three men that I'd never seen before. And they had laughed and made fun. Now, preacher, it has never bothered me when a little baby starts crying, the mother gets up and walks out. That don't bother me. But under God, I cannot preach if I see two young people laughing. I cannot preach if I see anybody mocking. It's I will say that um, despite the fact that I, I'm sure that I would disagree with what this person was preaching, uh, I don't think that it's okay for people like atheists to go into a church service and be disruptive. You, you know, uh, you shouldn't, that's just rude because, you know, there are people who do want to go there and hear what the person has to say, and they have the right to do that. So I don't agree with this type of behavior. I think if you want to disrupt religious services or you want to fight back against what these preachers are saying, you should do so on your own platform and just just don't go to public events and be disruptive. That's just not cool. If somehow another takes it away from me, three times, I stopped. And I said the last time, if you men don't want to hear me preach, a lot of these people have come from miles to be here tonight, and they do, would you just get up and walk out of the arena? One of them said, if you think you are man enough to come up here and put us out, you just come up here. And I prayed a prayer. Never have prayed before, never have prayed since. So you're a preacher and obviously a Christian, but you had never prayed a prayer up until that point and you've never prayed since? That doesn't make any sense. I'm starting to not believe this story. Maybe it is just a story. But uh, if this venue was as big as you say it was, do you not have security that can simply escort people like this out? Like, that's ridiculous. I said, dear Jesus, let me backslide for 15 minutes. And I promise you, Lord, if you'll let me backslide for 15 minutes, I'll go up there and beat the devil out of all three of them. Who is this guy talking to in the background? Uh, if you didn't hear what he said, he said, Lord, let me backslide for 15 minutes and I'll go and beat the devil out of them. That's that's good. That's uh, that's good to promote violence. That's the way to solve your problems. And God said, I didn't call you to fight. I called you to preach. He said, you turn them over to me. And I did. And they continued to mock all the way through the sermon. We had over 400 people to walk down that aisle that night and give their hearts to Jesus Christ. So it was a venue with 400 people in the audience, but you didn't have security there that could simply escort people out that were threatening the preacher? I'm finding this increasingly hard to believe with every word spoken. I fully intended to never show them enough attention to address them again. But just as I was ready to pronounce the benediction, my arm came up. Preacher, did anything ever come out that you hadn't planned to say? That you couldn't help but say it? <laughs> Has that ever happened to you? But how many of you preachers here have ever had something just come out that you didn't have in your notes and it just, just came out? Yes, every preacher, every God called preacher has. And my arm just came out and I said, I do not know who you three gentlemen are. But all three of you stepped over God's deadline, God signed your death warrant, and God's going to kill all three of you. That was about 10, 15, Sunday night. At 8 o'clock the next night, the next morning, I didn't know who these men were. So, God is going to kill all of them for disrupting your church service? Seems a bit harsh. One of them put the key in the door of his office on Main Street, Ringo, Louisiana, and dropped dead. At 11.30, the second man started across the street to a little restaurant to have his lunch from his office. 
And a lady was driving up the street and almost ran over him. She said he just walking along normal, fell flat on his face, and died right there in the street. At 5.30 that afternoon, the third man was sitting in his office, and he said to his secretary, my two friends are in hell, and before the sun goes down, I'll join them. And pitched out of their feet a corpse. My wife was with me in the revival. We had closed the revival meeting on, on, on that Sunday night, and we had driven. Aaron Ra, Matt Diddle Honey. Do you hear those stories? That man knew he was... That third man knew he... he that man, hostile to Christianity, knew he was about going to die. He just knew, he had inner knowledge that he knew he was going to die. Where, where did that inner knowledge come from? Well, apparently he knew that his two other friends died, which is likely if they were his friends, he would probably find out the same day. Uh, and if two of your friends die, it's possible you would think, uh, well, I'm next, you know, I mean, even if it's not logical, but I fail to see, even if this story, even if I were to grant you it's true, which it's obviously not, how does that prove that God exists? It's a story, and I don't find it convincing whatsoever. This is just like if you pointed to any of the stories in the Bible and said, Oh, well, this is proof that God exists, but I don't find those stories convincing, just like I don't find this convincing. And even if this is true, so you're saying that the guy that you worship, the God that you worship, would kill three people who presumably had families and children just because they disrupted a church service? Well, to be honest, that's actually in line with the behavior of the Old Testament God, so it kind of makes sense. It wasn't just a flute because he died. <laughs> and Rob, Matt, little honey, are you too chicken? Are you too chicken to tackle this story? Maybe you atheists are really dumb after all. Maybe you atheists know there's a god after all, and you know just suppress it. Use the mind. Use the mind. Your mind's powerful denial. <laughs> I mock you, little, three little softies. If you can't ask, if you can't solve this riddle, was that a riddle? I, I I love this guy's confidence. I have to admit, um, but no, I don't think that R and Ra or Matt Dillahunty are going to waste their time responding to this video. So I decided that I would. You know, they brought out the D the D League. Stupid ass. I I would play the story. No, I won't. Yeah, I will. The door of his office on Main Street, Ringo, Louisiana. And so I like how the, the guy, this guy didn't know these men at all, and yet in the story he knows the street that the guy lived on. Listen at 11.30, the second man started across the street to a little restaurant to have his lunch from his office, and a lady was driving up the street and almost ran over him. She said he just walked along normal, fell flat Ooh. on his face, and died right there in the street. At 5.30 that afternoon, the third man was sitting in his office, and he said to his secretary, my two friends are in hell, and before the sun goes down, I'll join them. And pitched out of the feet of corpse. Did you hear that? Secretary, Not really. At 5.30 that afternoon, the third man was sitting in his office, and he said to his secretary, my two friends are in hell. Why would he think that they're in hell if the guy was an atheist? And before the sun goes down, I'll join them. Aaron Raw, Matt Diddle Honey. <laughs> Maybe there is a God after all. Can you prove that the deaths were caused because of your God? I would like to see how you could actually prove that. And I'm confused. Did this preacher actually, did, he didn't pray for this to happen, did he? God just decided, oh, I'm just going to kill these guys. Why, why did God say, I'm not going to let the preacher fight these guys? Because that, that would be wrong. But it's okay for him, God to just kill them outright? What? Where's the logic in that? Yeah, this doesn't prove that God exists at all. Because there's no way that you could prove that the deaths were caused by a supernatural force. You better hope there's not. Because if there is, you're going to go to hell.
and join those three people who are burning in the hell. <laughs> but then again, you're too chicken shit to uh, uh, try to debunk this story. Or you'll debunk it, but it won't be truly debunked. You just say it never really happened. <laughs> well, it doesn't seem like it ever happened. But even if it did happen, there's no way for you to prove that the, these guys died because a god did it, nor would it be any proof that your specific god caused it. What was the autopsy of the deaths? Like, what, like uh, did they do an autopsy of these three guys? How, do you, how did they actually die? This doesn't prove anything. Because you can't stand that if what, if what happened, what he said had really happened, it had serious implications for you. You pig-headed atheists. Okay. Well, um, that guy seemed awfully excited about the idea of atheists burning in hell for all of eternity, which is kind of concerning in its own right. But, um, yeah, I hope you guys can see why I felt compelled to respond to this. So, um, if, if I had to um, say a closing thought, I would say that the, the one proof I, I know that there is no God is this guy's haircut. So thank you guys for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.